Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting in verse 3. But if our gospel is hidden, it is hidden to those who are perishing, in whom the God of this age, Satan the devil, has blinded the minds of those who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. The gospel, that is the good news of God's kingdom to come. And that's what I want to speak upon today. What is the gospel of light? Are there many facets of it? Is it just a real simple message? Now, Satan the devil in Revelation 12 verse 9 deceived and is deceiving the whole world. The world is blind to the gospel. And so let's go to 2 Corinthians 11. For indeed, if someone comes preaching another Jesus, whom we did not preach, or you receive a different spirit, which you did not receive, or a different gospel, which you did not accept, you put up that it's good. Verse 5, but I consider myself in no way inferior to those highly exalted so-called apostles. He wasn't talking about the 12 apostles with Matthias added. He was talking of the so-called apostles that were coming into the church, preaching a false Christ, a false vision, a prosperity gospel. It's okay. You can have everything you want now. Your success and your prosperity is already a part of the finished works of Jesus Christ. And so that is a false gospel. So don't be fooled of that message. And we are to have our eyes open towards the light. Now let's go to Galatians 1 and verse 6. I am astonished that you are so quickly being turned away from Christ who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel. So what it is, is they twist and turn the truth and get their eyes off the vision, off the door, Christ, another realm, and they start speaking about worldly things. Now the focus here is, why are you so easily turned to this? Maybe because you're attracted and grounded to the world? Now let's go to Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, verse 1, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to who? The poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. We read the whole world's in captivity in Revelation 12, 9. So the good news is that Jesus Christ came to set us free, to have hope. And so to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. When? When the kingdom comes. So don't worry about things that are not going your way when there will be a day of vengeance. That is actually good news. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. He went around to all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues. So he went to church and preaching the gospel of the kingdom at church. So many people think the gospel of the kingdom is just, you know, with big signs out there to the world. And that's the mission. That's the thing. Well, here's the gospel of the kingdom to the church. There are many facets. You never stop talking about the good news. Let's go to Matthew 26, verse 6. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany in Simon the leper's house, a woman came to him with an alabaster flask of ointment very precious, and poured it on his head as he sat down to eat. But when his disciples saw it, they became indignant and said, What reason is there for this, this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for much and the money given to the poor. But Jesus knew this and said to them, 
Why do you cause trouble for this woman? For she has performed a good work towards me. For you have the poor with you always, but you do not always have me. What this woman did in pouring this ointment on my body, she did for my burial. That had to happen. Now listen what it says. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, what this woman has done shall also be spoken of for a memorial for her. You ever realize that this is gospel? Because without Jesus having his head anointed, he could never then be sacrificed. She was part of the gospel and her name shall be said as a memorial. He said, this gospel, this is good news. In other words, apostles, why are you getting in the way of this? Can we get in the way for the sake of the simulator now? Like the false Christ preach? Come on, we need to help the poor now. We need to save everyone now. Everyone can be happy. And yelling at a TV screen with politics. They're off. We need to get everything right now. See, they lack vision of the good news of the gospel. And this woman understood it in her calling. Now, let's read Mark chapter 1. Mark was a writer for the gospel of who? It's really the gospel of who? Peter. Peter. Peter was the eyewitness. Mark wasn't even around then. But they wrote Mark because he was the writer. And listen to the very first words. Have you ever recognized this? The beginning of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Do you know why we have the four gospels? You ever thought of this? The four, the good news of the coming kingdom? Because it was four aspects of Christ's life. Everything about it is good news. If you were to follow every word just in the gospels itself, you would make it to the kingdom of God. It is the new covenant. And it gets very descriptive in spots like Matthew 5 and Matthew 6 and 7, the Sermon on the Mount. But do you notice the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ? He's the great news. Right? A thirsty soul. What does he want? He'd love to hear a messenger come in. Right? How wonderful the feet of peace are from a messenger from afar. Did he come from afar? He went through the door to the simulation, right? So we must follow the trailblazer. This is the greatest news of all, an instruction manual in the Gospels, how to succeed. That's good news, right? Isn't it good news if you're lost with the machinery and someone brought you, here's the manual. It's great news. We have a manual, basic instructions before leaving earth. That's Good news. So the gospels all about Christ is what we should preach and live by. And we go to Mark chapter 16. This is the last chapter. Did you know Christ already died? He was crucified at this time. He already, he was on the end of his 40 days back. Did you know that coincides with Acts 1? Yes. So he's talking to the 11 apostles. You know why? Because it's not later till Acts 1 that Matthias is ordained. And we pick it up here. Mark chapter 16, 15. And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world to preach the gospel to the whole creation. He never said that before to the apostles. He specifically said just to Israel. But now that the veil was ripped from top to bottom, it was open to the Gentiles. And then later we learned the Apostle Paul just took it to a whole new level to the Gentiles. But do you understand that? That now they could go on Pentecost. Wasn't Peter at Pentecost? Repent! Who, who is he talking to? People from Greece, from all over the world, Italy, different regions. Why are Because they, they can now preach it to the whole world. And so, 16, the one who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but the one who does not believe shall be condemned. And these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons, these 11 apostles. They shall speak with new languages. 
That's proof right there. They're not just talking to the Jews. Right? Other languages? Mm -hmm. So, in verse 19, the Lord was indeed taken up to heaven. See, that's Acts 1.10. Remember when he left? Mm -hmm. Now, that's good news. Let's go to Acts 16.9. And a vision appeared to Paul during the night. A certain man of Macedonia was standing, beseeching him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, we immediately sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to what? Preach the gospel to them. This is a region, so it takes God to bring you there. Here in Scripture is exactly what happened. Now, what happened when they went there? We read, therefore, after sailing, we read 11, and they went to Philippi, verse 12, which is the primary city of what? Macedonia. Then the days of the weeks, Pentecost, we went outside the city by a river where it was customary for prayer to be made. And after sitting down, we spoke to the woman who were gathered together there. And a certain woman who worshiped God was listening. Her name was Lydia and was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira whose heart the Lord opened to receive the gospel. So it takes God to open someone's mind or heart to receive the truth, correct? Here we have it in scripture. 15, and after she and her household were baptized, her whole household, she besought us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and lodge there. Sounds like the virtuous woman with Elisha, the Shunammite. Remember? Mm -hmm. And 16, now it came to pass that as we were going to prayer, a certain damsel who had a bad spirit of a python, that's a demon, met us and brought her masters much gain by divining. She followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are servants of the most high God and are preaching us the way of salvation. <laughs> Even the demons can preach the gospel. That's what it is right here. She knew, because the demons know, right? But it was becoming annoying. And this kept happening wherever he, where Paul went. So then he cast the demon out. And to make a long story short, they beat Paul and Silas. And you get that famous story, they're in the jail. And remember, they sung what? Hymns, and I'll guarantee you, it was hymns about the kingdom. Hope. And they sung them. And the jailers had to hear them. And then there was a great earthquake. And they were let out. And the one jailer that was responsible for them, he went to go take his own life. Because it would be curtains for him anyways. But Paul recognized and says, you don't have to take your own life. He goes, what do I have to believe to be saved? And he told him about the gospel because God opened the mind, the heart, like Lydia, to receive it. And guess what? Not only the jailer was saved, but his household. So he did preach there when he had that vision to go to Macedonia. It was really to do the gospel, but to collect Lydia and the household and the jailer in the household. And out from them, how many more were called? You don't know. But God does his handiwork through his preachers and so now, let's go to Acts 17, one verse. Then some philosophers of Apicurians and the Stoics encountered him. And some of them said, what will this babbler have to say? And some said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign gods because he was preaching to them, notice, the gospel of Jesus and the resurrection. So it's called the gospel of salvation. Now, isn't that good news that there's going to be a resurrection? So once you die, it's not the end. I think that's good news. They have sci-fi movies about that. And it's very good news to whoever's being resurrected. It's just, but we get to be resurrected with the perfect full measure of the spirit. Now that's good news. So this is the gospel. The gospel of the resurrection. 
Let's go to 1 Peter 4, verse 6. And for this purpose, the gospel was preached to those who have died. What? <laughs> preached to those who had died so that although in the flesh they may in fact have been judged according to men's standards. So that tells you these are the ones that weren't called. Like Noah preached. Right? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, they might live according to God's will. What? In the spirit. So eventually, all those that are dead, it's Revelation 20, verse 5, then the rest of the dead, after the thousand years, rate the rest, the billions, the ones in this verse, the ones I heard there was hope. I denied it, but it's true. I want to go the way. I want to hear more of the good news. And we'll be there to present it to them. It will never stop. The good news just keeps coming. So it's hope even to the dead, correct? That should put a smiley on your face. Life is just not here and it's just in vain and it's over. There's hope. That's a wonderful, we should never be ashamed of that gospel. It's beautiful. Now let's go to Romans 1. And listen to this intro. Paul writes to Rome. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, a called apostle, set apart to preach the gospel of God. What does this tell you? He's set apart to preach it to Rome. So there are certain individuals, they call them evangelists, brethren. Evangelists, there are some to be apostles, some to be teachers, some to be healers, some to be prophets. But they all have good news. But some are to preach the gospel to regions. Then the church can get behind them because they show fruits and they could support that. See how beautiful it is? Once you understand truth, God is very structured, but he also wants us to judge righteous judgment, to know what to do. He doesn't tell us exactly in percentages. He doesn't want that. So we read here, Romans 15, verse 16. In order that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ, Paul says, unto who? The Gentiles. To perform the holy service, now notice, of teaching the gospel of God. That's why there are some that would be teachers. Now, I'm teaching by what God has shown me. Now, if I taught the things not of the kingdom, I would be a bad teacher. One of doom and gloom, a false Christ. But if I'm preaching the gospel of the kingdom, like we're living in a simulator, and we got to think outside the box and have the thoughts of God, that's the gospel. And every teacher of God should preach the good news. Right there in scripture, to be a teacher of the gospel. Not just a warning, a warning, so much of the old church just believe it's a warning, a warning, a warning. You also have to teach it. What about if they answer the call? It's precious to God, right? So then we read in 19, through the power of signs and wonders and the power of the Spirit of God, so that in the circuit from Jerusalem to Elycrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And indeed, I have aspired to preach the gospel of Christ where the name of Christ was not known so that I might not build on another's foundation. Paul knew if Peter was in a certain region that he wouldn't go in to that area. Why is that in scripture? See, it's not just about, no, go everywhere, just preach it on, save everyone and do all this. And no, there's... It's organized. It's structured. If he's working with certain individuals and this girl's on a park bench listening to Paul and then well, here's Peter, it's confusing to the person being called. See? So God set certain regions and in those ones that are called have to know what are the regions so that they don't step on others. Now, Galatians chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 8. Now, in the scriptures, God seeing in advance that he would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham. Abraham had the good news. 
You know he seeked a city made without human hands because he believed the gospel, the good news of something else larger, saying, in you shall all nations be blessed. Now, in Abraham, all nations be blessed? What was in Abraham? Let's go to verse 16. Now, to Abraham and to his seed were the promises spoken. He does not say, and to your seeds, plural. He says, of many, but as of one, and to your seed, which is Christ. In other words, he wasn't talking about the physical, where the Pharisees seemed to gravitate to. He was talking about the spiritual body, the seed of Christ. And it said that's why he understood and he had the gospel. Now, Jesus Christ is the good news. Part, he's the king of the kingdom. Now, remember when Jesus was amongst the apostles and he says, the kingdom of God is amongst you. That scripture has thrown many a, to a, a loop. Okay? What does that mean? He was the ambassador of the kingdom from the kingdom here on earth, the simulation. Not the new earth, this earth. Showing us the way, the truth, the life, the good news, how to trailblaze, how to shine God's light, right? Everything he did. He, he, the kingdom of God is likened unto a great pearl. He, just every, he was the greatest ambassador. Just good news just flowed out of his mouth like living waters. So, 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 2. And we sent our brother Timothy, a servant of God, and our fellow worker in the gospel of Christ, in order to establish you and to encourage you concerning your faith. So Timothy was sent to Thessalonica, where the congregation of, the, of God's people were. Not to other areas of Russia and they got a No, the gospel was to be even preached to his own. Why? It says, so that no one might be unduly shaken by these persecutions. For you yourselves know that we are appointed to this very thing. Now let's go to verse 6. But now after Timothy came to us from you and told us the good news of your faith and your love, and you always keep us in mind and are longing to see us, even as we are as long to see you, through this report about you, we were encouraged. The Apostle Paul and his accompaniment was encouraged? Brethren, in all your persecution and trouble because of your faith. So in other words, when Timothy went down there, because they were being persecuted by the false Christ way of life, we don't need to keep the, all the whole, we don't need to do this, we're, and watering down the truth. So he sent Timothy to look up. Come on, this is God's kingdom. And they go, absolutely, seek first the kingdom, high five. And they, he came back with a good report. And it moved Paul and the others. It encouraged them. So the good news can be preached to the congregations, right? To encourage them. Their focus needed to be looking up. Can't you see this is needed today? Can't you see that there are those that can Preach the gospel to the congregations of God in the end times where there's lukewarm congregations mixed with the world, false Christ, Christianity? Well, we have it right here. I never realized this before because so many times we think the gospel needs just to be preached from a guy, you know, repent, turn, and that's it. It's everything about us. It should flow like it flowed out of Christ's lips. Now let's go to Matthew 24, because it can also be used as a witness. Now this is the Sermon on the Mount, the end time. He's coinciding with trumpet plagues and so forth. And in Matthew 24, verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be proclaimed in all the world 
for a witness to all nations, and then the end shall come. Now, we know in Revelation 11, there's the two witnesses. Would it be safe, after studying the whole Bible, that they're appointed by God? See, it's not the 7,280 witnesses. Well, I'll bring them all! It's not like that. Just like Paul was told to go to a certain region and not step on another region's feet. See? So the two witnesses, and what did they do? They preached the testimony, warnings to the world before Christ comes. Right? So then, even after them, there are three angels that preach the gospel. Do you know that? Let's go to Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7. And I saw another angel, it's the first of three actually, flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. Do you know it lasts forever, this good news? It's not like good news and then the next day, uh, that's the world. This lasts forever. It says it right there. To proclaim to those who dwell on the earth in the simulator and to every nation and tribe and language and people saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Then two more angels follow. Nothing's going to stop this good news from coming. It's like a freight train going down the track. You're not stopping it. The question is, are you going to have the faith to follow it? Because now the last part of the sermon is about you. What does the gospel mean to you? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. For truly we have had the gospel preached to us, right? That's why we're here. <laughs> even as they also did. But the preaching of the word did not profit them, uh-oh, because it was not mixed with faith. Number one, you need faith to those who heard. Now let's go to verse six. Consequently, since it remains for some to enter into it, that's eternity, and those who had previously heard the gospel did not enter, why? Because of disobedience. So those two things can hold you back from the good news. Lacking faith and disobedience. So what we want is faith and obey the voice of the good news. Now we must put on the armor of God. Do you know the armor of God mentions the gospel? Let's go to Ephesians 6, 15. And having your feet shod with the preparation, that's the readiness, of the gospel of peace. Now, how do you get peace in a chaotic world? You can't. That's why God is establishing the good news for us how to get to his kingdom of peace. So why the feet? There are boots. Because we walk where? Towards the kingdom of peace. Everything we do, the light shines, the light of the gospel. You ever heard of that one? That's Jesus. So it lights up the pathway. So a true warrior of God is going to have the helmet of salvation in the mind, the kingdom, right? The sword of his word. That's the words they speak. And they walk where? Towards the kingdom. Right? Not a little side fun at some worldly exit. So we walk towards peace. And I want to read 18. Praying at all times. You know, that is actually a tool in the armor. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit and this very thing being watchful with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that boldness of speech may be given to me so that I may open my mouth to make known the mystery of the gospel. This good news is a mystery. Mysterious. Like, outside the box, another realm. Cuckoo! But people have all kinds of reactions. The more grounded they are in the world, the more they think you're crazy. And the ones that 
thought Jesus was crazy, where were they grounded? In the world. They didn't like the good news of the coming kingdom of God, so they executed him. Now for the last scripture, let's go to 1 Corinthians 9, 14. In the same way also, the Lord did command that those who preach the gospel are to live of the gospel. So in other words, no hypocrites. So you will know them by their fruits. See? So if they were to live by the gospel, they're all constantly comforting. No, you've got to look up. What does the scripture say? The kingdom focus and they're representing God. And guess what? They live it. They're excited about it. That is a key in all our lives. You and you and you are ambassadors of that kingdom. Shouldn't you live the gospel like Jesus Christ did? So we heard a lot today about the good news of the kingdom, the good news of a resurrection of salvation, the good news of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. This is wonderful. So, fellow Christians, let's put a smile on our face, let's look up, and let's resonate God's kingdom to come.